day in our valley. And now this sky, leaving the sun, moves into darkness. And even as this sky changes, the lives of the people who live in its light will change. And some will find love this night. Some will know pain. Between bright day and black night lies the hour of change, the hour of twilight. Jane, it's all right. I parked down the street. Dennis, you shouldn't have come here. Is anyone else at home? Fred's due any time now. Well, I've got to talk to you before he gets here. What is it, Dennis? We're in a jam. We've got to decide what we're going to do. Sit down. Tell me what's happened. Jane, we've been found out. Your husband must have hired a detective. When I got to my office this morning, my secretary said he'd been there, the detective. He had a picture of you. He must have gotten it from your husband. Fred? He wanted to know about your coming there, how often, what time of day, everything. That made me think of other places we'd been. I called and called them all. The same photo, the same questions. He'd even gotten them to sign affidavits. Well, I... I suppose it had to come out sometime. I never dreamed it would end like this. It's not very pleasant, darling. It's not the way we planned. But in the end, it will be. I feel as though I've been holding my breath for six weeks, and now I can breathe again. Jane. Oh, it's good. It, it's so good to feel free and open about this. I've hated it. I've hated having to keep it undercover until we could both be free. But now it's out, and we can be open with them and, and make a clean break. Yes, Jane. Now we'll leave behind everything that spoiled our lives. We'll start a new life together. We haven't done anything to be ashamed of. All we have to admit is the truth. The way they'll put it. They take the affidavits, the witnesses, seen here, seen there. They add it up their way, and they make it come out so sordid, so... We can explain. Try to explain when they twist the words right in your mouth. Why, they... and I'm very beautiful and kiss me. Jane, listen to me. When I got this news, it knocked me off balance. I've been trying to think straight all day long, trying to come to the right decision about what I must do. You should have called me. This is our problem. I know that, but the thing that keeps hitting me hardest is what this will do to my two daughters. And Jane, it comes down to this. My daughters come first. They're teenage girls, Jane. They're right at that age where my companionship is important to them. Their pride in me, what I stand for, my reputation. But... But only last week you... You spoke of 
how they'd grown away from you, that, that they, they had their own interests, they and their mother. I said a lot of things. I don't know if it was that I wasn't seeing the situation clearly or... Don't you see what a scandal like this will do to those kids? With my face, my name, their name smeared across the front pages. This is more important than what we felt for each other. But I was worried about this. And you said no, you, you had a right to your own happiness. You paid their bills and beyond that whole no moral obligation. The things I said look shabby now, I know. Oh, no. If I could only make you understand it, make you see it clearly. What is it, Dennis? What is it you want me to do? Persuade your husband not to make a scandal out of this. You can do that, Jane. I know you can. I'll try to help you. Surely he could be made to realize that revenge won't do him any good. The whole thing could be done so quietly. And then we can go away together. No, Jane. All of that's over. What then? I go back to Catherine, if she'll take me back, and you... What do I do? Why, then you'll be free. That's what you wanted. You wanted to be free of Fred. I wanted to be free so I could be with you. That can't be. But, but I love everything we've grown to mean. I just can't stop loving you. Jane. No, I'd rather be dead. Jane, face this thing, please. <laughs> Try to understand it realistically. This isn't reality. This is a nightmare. I'd adjusted myself to this drab existence of poker parties and business dinners, of, of living with a man who never wanted a child, who, who expected everything and gave nothing. You made me see this for what it is. You made me fall in love with you. Have you nothing to say? I've, I've been wrong, so wrong, so many mistakes. You make me guilty of the most shameful, disgusting thing a woman can do. No, no, I'd rather kill myself right here and now than, than believe a lover I knew was good and fine as, as this. Jane, don't talk like that. I would. Jane, stop it. No. Give it up. No.
things like this don't happen. You read about them in the newspapers. They just don't happen to ordinary people like me. I've murdered. I've stabbed. I've stabbed. I stabbed. <laughs> Hello, yellow cab. Will you send a taxi to my home at 9625 Sunnydale Way? And please, please hurry. No, not into L.A., to the town hall, to the police station. about the barrel of clothing our patrol sending to Europe. Oh, oh yes, just a moment. I have them in the laundry. I did, but use this to buy something for your barrel. I don't know. Something nice and new. Oh, all right. Oh, I, I need this for my cab. Thank you. Thank you very much.
is it? Where's my brother? He's not here. Not here, huh? Well, that's all right. I can wait. I got nothing to do in particular. What's the matter with you? What are you so hard-nosed about? You better close that door, Jane. You're letting the flies in. Or if you're hinting for me to go, just remember, I'm a very coarse fellow. I don't understand such subtle signs. Hey, you look pretty dressed up, Jane. Expecting somebody for dinner? You never get dressed up like that just to welcome Freddie home. Who are you expecting? Whom are you expecting? Now, which is it? No kidding, I want to know. Who or whom? You're always trying to tell people how they should talk. Freddie! Hey, Jane, there's a dog out here in the back. Is he yours? <coughs> Don't tell me Freddy went and got himself a dog. He must have smelled the meat. Hey, that's pretty neat, pretty neat. You know, if I was smart, I'd invite myself to dinner. But of course, I'm not so smart. Hmm. Mighty sharp. Aren't you afraid all these nice vegetables will get willed? Why don't you put them in the refrigerator? Maybe you'll need a little helper. Frail little woman like you with the whole house to take care of all by yourself. No wonder you slip up on things like this. Eh, yeah. beer. Go for one of these. Always like a nice cold bottle of beer on a warm day. Always had a weakness for it. Always had a weakness for beer on any day, I guess. Especially at the beach. Remember? We used to go down to the beach a lot, Freddie and me. It was pretty swell down there. And after the sun go down, we'd light a fire and have a picnic with lots of beer. First, it was just Freddie and me. Then Freddie started bringing along girls. He laughed when I wanted to get me a girl, said I had better wait till I got into high school. Then you got into the picture. You were the one he was always with. How do you like it? Gabardine stains, too. Say, so where are the kitchen towels? Annette? Here you are. going to use a clean towel? Aren't you being a little extravagant? Uh, it's my right sleeve and I'm a little clumsy with my left hand. Would you mind? Isn't it dandy having a wife all for yourself? Remind me to try it sometime. Want to get rid of this? Okay. Very neat job. No stain at all. You always did have a knack for fixing things. Yes, ma'am. You fixed me, didn't you? At least you thought you did. You couldn't stand your husband paying so much attention to his kid brother because that meant he had to take time off from paying attention to you. So you fixed me. You fixed my wagon, but good. Remember? Remember? That night, when we were all around the fire at the picnic and drinking beer, and Freddie was trying to get me drunk just for laughs. Yep. Well, what do you know? Second. What do you want me to do, get drunk again? Huh? Well, Dutchess will take more than two cans of beer to do it this time. 
You know, it's almost ten years ago, and I still remember. I stumbled over to where you were sitting in the shadows, and I sat down beside you. I tried to kiss you. And Freddie had his back to us, and you were up screaming in a minute, saying, Stop it! Stop it! And Freddie had his arm around you, asking what happened. And you said... Remember what you said? I remember. Boy, do I ever remember. You said, keep that filthy kid away from me. That's what you called me, a filthy kid. I was 18 years old and I was loaded to the gills with beer and you called me a filthy kid. Now, do you think that was a very nice thing to do to a kid of 18, break him up with his brother and get him that kind of a reputation? Freddie never said anything about it, but from that day on, it was different. I could always tell he was thinking about it. And I always remember it was you who'd fixed it. Personally, I can't figure out how a sweet guy like my brother ever got mixed up with you. Oh, you're pretty enough, but... You... And all those years of your talk about babies, day in, day out, showing them baby pictures in magazines, taking them out to the neighbors' houses to show them their babies. I don't see how the guy put up with it. All he wanted around him was you, and you didn't appreciate that. He wasn't enough for you. Shut up! Well, she's recovered her speech. The Duchess can talk. Come on. Come on. Talk some more. No more talk? And I thought we were going to have such a nice, friendly conversation. What's the matter, nervous? You gonna have another one of your sick headaches? Hmm? What are you looking at? Watching the sun go down? Very poetic, isn't it? Artistic. Brings out the finer nature. You know, you ought to have a long-haired artist paint a picture of you watching the sun go down. Only if you do that, you ought to include me in. Much more romantic. Man and a woman against a setting sun. <laughs> the Duchess has spirit. I like that. Get out of here! Get out of here, Ella! Yo, what? I'll tell Fred everything. Everything? You'll tell him everything. Don't be such a square. Now I'm really going to begin on you. I don't... Only the cabbie. I gave him four bits. I told him you'd change your mind. You had no right. It was worth the four bits. I haven't got down to business with you yet. You had no right to send him away. Oh, didn't I? I wouldn't do that if I were you. If you go out now, you're going to miss some very interesting company. One person in particular, a lady you've got a lot in common with. Mrs. Dennis Williams. That's a good girl. You got more company coming too that you don't know about. Mrs. Williams' husband, Dennis Williams. You know him, don't you? And there's Freddie. They're all going to be here. And me, too. I'm going to stick around. Oh, seventh race. I got a horse in that one. 
And now, by special arrangement with the Daily Racing Scratch Sheet, we bring you the result of the seventh race from Santa Anita Turf Club at Arcadia, California. In the seventh at Santa Anita, number nine, Bill. Miss Grillo was the winner. Number 11, Dinner Gong, was second. Someday I'll learn to save my hard-earned money. Rose. Bill, please. Hmm? What you just said. You were only teasing me, weren't you? Why should I be teasing? You called them up and asked them to come here. 5.30. Yeah, it's that now. They ought to be coming any minute. So now you see why I didn't want you to go out, don't you? You can't run away from this. Things have a way of catching up. You know the golden rule, do unto others. You did me. You hired the detective, not Fred. That's right. Now I'm doing you. I've waited for this day for a long time. Now I'm backstage on the curtain calling the cues. I'm gonna watch the four of you put on the neatest show you ever saw. I'll bet that Don Juan boyfriend of yours must have blown his top when he got my message. He called you, didn't he? And you were gonna hop a cab and skip out on my little comet. Well, my dear sister-in-law, I wouldn't have you miss this for all the rice in China. The only one I'm worried about is Fred. He's gonna be hurt, but he'll get over it. And he'll be a very happy guy with you out of his life. But the big thing I'm looking forward to is you two, you and that joker, when you two are face to face with his wife and your husband. You know, I get a kick thinking about that. Like the music? It's kind of sad. Uh, high class, your type. But it's very fitting for this occasion. Almost on the nose. Overture. Curtain going up. Uh, allow me. This is my pleasure. Mrs. Williams? Won't you come in? Has Mr. Williams arrived yet? No, but we're expecting him any minute. I'm Bill Vandal. Uh, I'm the one who phoned you. This is my sister-in-law, Jane Vandal. Oh. Yes, how do you do? Will you have a chair? Hmm? Yes, yes, thank you. Uh, Mr. Vandal ought to be coming along any minute. I don't know what's keeping the others. They, they should be here by now. I'd rather wait until they all got here before I go into the details of what this is all about. Oh, may I uh, light your cigarette? You and uh, Mr. Williams live over in Beverly Hills, don't you? Yes, we do. Lovely part of town. I like it there very much. Of course, Bel Air is nice too. But Beverly Hills is best. I used to cover that territory, Beverly, Westwood, Brentwood, right on out. Really? What do you do? I'm a liquor salesman. Oh. That's a very interesting field of endeavor. You meet all kinds of people from all walks of life, get a chance to study human nature in the raw, develop an understanding of psychology, you know, see how people's minds work. Mm-hmm. You have to, or else you don't sell. You gotta be able to figure out any angle, see? Or, uh, you don't sell. Do you work, Mrs. Bandle? No. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. No, I don't. You must be kept pretty busy yourself, Mrs. Williams. Why do you say that? Hey, running a big household. Parties, raising your children, getting them off to school. You seem to know quite a lot about my life. Well, I, I, I don't mean to be personal. It's just that, uh, you know, it's... I know. Uh, were you able to reach my husband? No, I left a message at the office. His secretary said he'd been in and gone. But that he'd be back, that he always drops by in the afternoon. Even if he's been gone all day. Yes, I left this address and phone number with my housekeeper. 
case he should call home before he left the office. Then we're covered. Well, I mean, he's bound to get the message uh, one way or another. Uh, do you have the time? 5.40. I wonder where they are. What's wrong, Mrs. Vandal? You're trembling. Nothing. That means someone's walking over your grave. It's nothing. They, uh, they ought to be here pretty soon now. Yes. You know, in school, I used to have a thing. Um, when we were late, we had to write, punctuality is the politeness of princes a hundred times. Punctuality is the politeness of princes? Yeah, a hundred times. Is that from Shakespeare? I don't remember where that's from. Please, there's something I want to tell you both. Jane, you're interrupting our conversation. Do you mind? But I want to tell you something... I'll sure I... later. But... It'll hold until Freddie and Mr. Williams get here. Let's uh, change this creepy music, huh? Yes, indeed. I think Beverly Hills is really a pretty beautiful part of the island. I want to hang up. Won't do you any good to call a cab. You can't get out of this. Come on. Please. Just a minute. I, I want to fix myself up. Okay. But I'm leaving the door open. Don't try any more monkey business with the phone.
for you. It's right back of us in the truck back there. Hey, there's Bill's car. I forgot about him. He told me he was coming over, but he wouldn't say what about. Hope he isn't looking for another touch. Cross your fingers for me on that. Hey, whose car is that? Hickey, you put it up there, okay? Yes, sir. Come on. Hiya, Billy. Hi, Fred. How are you? Oh, tired, you know. Yeah. Oh, there you are, Janie. I thought you'd try to run out on us. Yeah, I got a surprise. Yeah? Hey, kid, you're putting on the beef. You know that? <laughs> I'd like you to meet my brother, Fred Mandel. How do you do, Mrs. Williams? How do you do? Not bad. You want to watch your step with the kid here? He's a mighty smooth up. I beg your pardon. Oh, our Tuesday date? Uh, Mrs. Williams is here on a serious matter. Oh, no offense intended. I just thought for a minute, well, uh... Right in this door. Wait till you see this. Freddie, there's something I want to talk in to you about. In a minute, in a minute. Here, put it right here. Yes. Well, while we're waiting for Mr. Williams to get here, I'll take my brother outside and I'll give him the whole story. Oh? What's the matter? Doesn't he know? No. Nothing? No. Not a blessed thing. Oh. He's a very sweet person. I'm afraid this will be a bit of a joke to him. Yes, I'm sure it will. What do you think? It's a honey. Jane! Jane! Don't you know what it is? It's a television set. Just wait. Wait till I get that doohickey up in the roof. What is it you call that thing? Antenna. Yeah, that's it. Just wait. Prize fights, wrestling, night baseball. Where's uh, the outlet? The what? The power. Oh, in the wall there, back of the radio. Well, I better get to work on the roof. Uh, uh, do you need any help? Uh, a ladder? Uh, no, thanks. Uh, we have everything. Well. Hmm? Why are you doing this? I'm curious. It's a funny question coming from you of all people. What? He's my brother. That's the only decent thing to do. Oh, I see. Decent thing. Look. Now, don't anyone touch these now. Fred, I want to see what they're doing up in the roof. Look, this is important, Fred. Yeah? Yeah, I've got to talk to you. Well, it can wait. No, it can't wait. What is it that's so important that can't wait? I'd rather tell you outside. Sure. Will you excuse us, please? I'd like to talk to you. Come on, sit down. the wronged wife, I'm supposed to hate you. But I don't. Does that surprise you? 
I don't like you. I think you're a fool and a weakling. That brother-in-law of yours hates you. He really hates you. I don't envy you having him around all these years. Please. There's something I Wait. Must... Wait just a minute. There's several things I want to get off my mind. First, I knew Dennis was after somebody. I didn't know who, but I knew what you'd be like. You see, I've been married for 14 years, and you come to know a person through and through in 14 years, and I know Dennis. He's a many-sided man, and I must say that some of his sides are pretty attractive. Oh, the Dennis you know could charm the birds right out of the trees, but when you get to know what that charm really is, it's pretty shoddy. I don't know what he said about us. But I imagine he's told you we don't understand him, that he holds no moral obligation as far as we're concerned. He'd have to say that to keep your picture of him clean. Am I right? I knew he'd found somebody. Because lately he's been so kind and so considerate and attentive at home. You see, this has happened before. Twice. Once about ten years ago. He never knew that I knew. Then two years ago, it happened again. That lasted a couple of weeks. And now you. But this time, he's going to realize that I know. Oh, it'll hurt him. It'll hurt him very much. I know his love for me and the children has nothing to do with this. Still, I don't want it to happen again. I understand it. But it hurts just the same. Oh. All three of you women are so alike. So very much alike. Of course, the other two weren't married. Neither are you in the full sense of the word. If you were, you wouldn't be so taken in with Dennis. If you really understood him, you'd know that he's a man with a tremendous desire to be worshipped. And you worship him. I'm telling you this because I want you to stop it. Things are going to be different from now on. You understand all this? It's not true. It's not true. Why? Because you don't want it to be true? Not true. I'm telling you this for your own good. It's not true. It is true. And when he gets here, I'm going to tell you what he's going to say. He's going to say that he loves me and that he wants to stay with me. When he kissed you and said he loved you, he only did it to see the look of worship on your face. To hear you say you loved him, you adored him. He closed his eyes and believed he was a great lover, a great hero. Stop it! Don't say it anymore! Don't say it anymore! Don't be such a fool. Have you stopped to think what's going to happen to you now? brother-in-law of yours is going to see that you don't get a penny. Have you any way of earning your own living? Do you have any children, Mrs. Vandal? Oh, what a pity. You've no one to love you. You're quite alone. I feel sorry for you. Really, I do. You never loved him. Depends on what you mean by love. I mean... Love. You never heard a word I said.
Why? Have you anything to say? She's no good, Freddy. I tried to tell you that years ago, remember? I guess you've almost forgotten what happened, but it's been on my mind ever since. She was no good then, too. And now you believe me, don't you, Freddy? Don't you? Well? What have you got to say? Answer me! Say something. Don't. Don't do it, Freddy. Don't. Let go. She's got this coming to her. Don't be a fool. That's just what she wants you to do. Huh? What's that? Do you want her to file a countersuit? Huh? She'll claim you beat her up, don't you see? Look at her. Look, she's just waiting for you to hit her again. Hey, you see, you see, look. You don't know the person. You don't know her at all. Well, let's get on with it. We'll have to wait till Mr. Williams gets here. What time did you tell him to be here? I left a message at his office at 5.30. It's getting late. Yeah. Maybe I ought to call his office again, huh? No, he never works this late. I'll lay your odds he won't show. Maybe you're right. A guy like that, a guy who'd play around with another man's wife? You know. Yeah. He won't show. Perhaps he hasn't received the message. Oh, he got the message all right. How do you know? He called her to tip her off. He did? Yeah, she was calling a cab when I got here. Did he tell you to meet him someplace? I don't think he did that. Did he? I say he ran out on her. Left her in the lurch. Sure didn't think much of her if he did that. Why should he? I'll come back tomorrow. Thought you wanted to set up tonight. Special, you said. Come back tomorrow. I'll fix it up with you for your extra trouble. Well, okay. All right. Where did he run off to? Uh, Where is he? You talk. You keep on talking. You talk all the time. I, I tried to tell you. I wanted to tell you, but you wouldn't listen. He's here. He's here. He's been here all the time. <laughs> Come on, come on, where is he? Well, so what?
out of the driveway there. He had his hands on his chest, like this. He was very pale, and his shirt was all blood on one side. He had a car parked here, and he wanted to get into it, but he couldn't. He was trying to open the door with his elbow. That was when the ice cream man stopped. Well, where are they? Where did they go? To the receiving hospital, he said. In Van Nuys, huh? Yes. Um, this man, was he hurt bad? He was awfully pale, and blood. He looked like his heart hurt him, but it was the wrong side. Your heart's here. He was hurting here. How long ago was it? About a half an hour ago. How? Oh. He told you to tell me what? Oh, yes. You tell him I love him, too. Is it all right if I come right now? Can I see him? Yes, right away. What's the word? Oh, he's all right. It's his lung, but the doctor says he'll be all right. Of course, something could happen, but he's all what right. What happened? I mean, did the doctor say how it happened? What? Oh, yes, he he told me Dennis slipped while he was holding a skewer, a, a barbecue skewer. Yeah, slipped. Sounds fishy to me. I bet he's covering up for her. Oh, why don't you leave her alone? Look, I'm not trying to make trouble, but if she stabbed your she's husband, I should... She's not the kind who could. He's all right. Forgive me. Just like that. Forgive me. She steals your husband, she stabs him, scares you half to death. Forgive me. I forgive her. Suppose she's gone in there to have herself a good cry. I mean, she must feel sorry for herself. You're going to take your husband back after all this. Don't concern yourself with what I'm going to do. Put your own house in order, Mr. Vandal. My house? And hers. Mrs. Vandal? Mrs. Vandal? Leave her alone. Is there anything inside she could take? Sleeping tablets? I... I don't know. I... Jane. This is Vandal. Jane. Jane, let me in. Jane. 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 What's the matter? Why are you acting like this? No! No! Get some bandages or something, quick! Yes, she's hurting. It's her heart. Hush, hush, hush. 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 Emergency surgery. Yeah, this is Mac. Bringing in a slashed wrist, attempted suicide. Yeah, ten minutes. One of you bring your things. Things? Yeah, toothbrush. Uh, 
nightgown, all that sort of stuff. I'm coming with you. I'll ride with her. You're going to the receiving hospital, aren't you? Yes. Well, she should have somebody with her. You see, I'm going there anyway. Any rush on getting her stuff over there? Tell them I'll be over later, will you? And look, fellow, report this as an accident, see? An accident. You don't want to wear that coat, Freddy. It's all messed up. Pretty much of a shock, Freddy. Great shock, I know. But it's over now. It's like you've reached the end of a chapter in a book. You turn a page, everything's new. You'll see. It's like you've been driving up a long hill. You're in second all the way, and all of a sudden you get to the top, and there's a whole new world spread out before you. Oh, you don't want to wear that coat, Freddy. It doesn't look right. Here, try this. It'll go better with those pants you wear. Leave me alone. Freddy. It's been rough. Sure, I know it's been rugged. But listen, believe me, it's for the best. I know it hurts. Getting rid of her was like, like pulling out a rotten tooth. But it's out now. You still feel where it was hurting. Freddy, I got a great idea. We take my car, we run down to Mexico for a couple of days, down as not to get the sun. You need the sun. We lie around on the beach, get a load on with that Mexican beer and that tequila, huh? Remember? And I know a dame that works down there in one of those hotels. Cut it. Okay, okay, no dames. Just you and me, Freddy. I don't know what it means. Sure, sure. Let's get out of here. This is it. This is it. You and me, a couple of slap-happy sons of guns with the whole world in front of us. Blood's thick in the water, Freddy. You know that. I know that. My brother, Freddy. Look. If Mom were alive, she'd be glad that it's like this. That it's come back to being like this. You don't want to do that. I'll take care of that detail. It's not for you to do that. I'll fix things. That's my job. Look, I'm going to take you out and get some hot food into you. A good steak, you'll feel better. Better, you'll feel great. Then while you're having your coffee, I'll drop this stuff off and fill out all the forms at the hospital. You really hate her, don't you? Yeah. Why? <laughs> well, I don't exactly hate her. It, 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 just that I saw what she was doing to you. And, you know. It. No, I don't know. Well, what would you have done? Wouldn't you have followed it up? Followed it up? You didn't follow up anything. You've been scheming it. What do you mean? Just what I said. You've been scheming it. I mean, you find out something's happening doesn't look right. Do you come to me? Do you give it to me straight? No. You put detectives on her trail. You play it close and cagey till you figure you got a pat hand. Then you walk in here with it all set up. Everybody invited to the big surprise. You're wrong, Freddy. You got it all wrong. You think so, huh? Look, if you gotta wear that coat, let me at least fix it so it looks halfway decent. Hey, huh? Well, I guess that about does it. Oh, here, Fred, let me take this. Freddy, what's wrong? You. I got a good, clear sight of you. I can see what you've been doing. What you've been doing for years. You're there all the time, only I was too dumb blind to look. Everything I did was to help you. I only did it because I... Because you wanted to help. Yes, I know. Don't let me start remembering, because there are lots of things to remember. Freddy, you're talking wild. You don't know what you're saying. I'm talking sense. I had a good wife and a nice home. But you were jealous. And when you found out you couldn't have her, you didn't want me to have her either, did you? You got me interested in an easygoing crowd that she couldn't fit in with. Poker parties that lasted all night. Fun! Fun that she couldn't have a part of. Why, well, the last few years, we hardly even spent an evening together, just the two of us. I can see it all now. What's ever happened is more my fault than hers. Freddy, I'm trying to tell you, she was no good for you. I proved it to you. I, I got the affidavits here to prove it. Forget them. What's the matter with you? What are you running back to? She doesn't want any part of you. She doesn't love you anymore. Freddy! Have you forgotten what she did to you? She's nothing but a two-timing, double-crossing cheat! Don't 
Don't you ever call her that again. And keep away from us. It's the first time you ever hit me, Freddy. Anybody else, if you did that, I'd kill him. No. No, you can't do it, Freddy. Come back. Come back, Freddy. Stop the car. Stop the car, Freddy. Don't do this to yourself. Stop the car. Good for you, Freddy. She's no good for you. Don't be a crazy fool. Don't be a crazy fool. I love you, Freddy. Don't go back to work. This is our way, Freddy. Freddy! Freddy!